What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Flagrant Talk Sports Podcast. It's the boys here, Mo and Zay. Come on. And we got another banger for y'all today. Mm -hmm. We're going to be the f doing the first part of a little two-part series with NBA playoff teams. The mm -hmm. NBA season right around the corner. We thought it was no better time to give our predictions on the teams as they're more solidified now after the draft and after the offseason and a little preseason camp. Got to see a couple mm -hmm. of games. So excited to dive on into this one. There's uh it's gonna be some debates here because there's a lot yeah. of good teams in the league as we've talked about this year. So mm -hmm. the, the parody in the league this year is great. So there's expect some differences, expect some similarities, but I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as Mo said, parody is the biggest thing about the league right now. Um, you're seeing just a lot of really good teams, um, which is great. So there's going to be some debate. There's going to be some fans who are watching this video of certain teams who don't make it. And it's not because you don't have a good team and it's not because you don't have a good direction. The league is just in a really good spot. Yep. Um, and, and teams have to miss. So sadly, that's a part of the game. But yeah, in this video, we've got the Eastern Conference. So you will get the Western Conference in the next video. We're going to be talking about the teams that didn't make it first and then go from 10 all the way up to one um, kind of on seedings. Another caveat, at least for my list, because Mo and I didn't talk about our lists. We're going into this just we, we like to do it where we don't know what each other has. Um, this is not power rankings. This is predictions on seeding. So if we have, you know, a team where you're like, oh, well, this team's better than that team. That can be true. That That isn't a, a false statement. This isn't a power ranking. These are seeds. This is how we think they will do in the regular season. So before you go in the comments about it, that is how we're seeding these. Yep. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into it, Mo. I uh, apologize for getting all up in the camera there. I <laughs> lost my uh, I lost my second window. So <clears throat> perfect, but perfect. We're good. We're, locked. we're good. Yep. We're ready now. Yep. Um, Mo, do you want to get us started with some of the teams that didn't make the cut? Yeah, top ten. I will. Um, I don't know. Did you mention we're starting in the east? Might have missed yes. that during my yep. sorry, okay. Yep. Missed that during my uh, <laughs> little debacle there. But um, in the East, man, the East very top heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably got your top four, top three teams solidified. Mm -hmm. Second half of it gets a little challenging. There's a lot of teams yeah. right there on the cusp that I think could get in, should mm -hmm. get in. The team I'm gonna start it off with that might come to a shock to a lot of people is. Mm -hmm. The Toronto Raptors, I don't have them making it, unfortunately. New coach, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes new coaches come in and have a Joe Missoula type season. Just kidding. That doesn't really happen too often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think new coach, new system. It's going to take a year for them to get going. Obviously, I love Grady Dick in the draft. It's going to be mm -hmm. big for them. But I think there are a couple pieces away. There's a couple guys considered in trade talks that might mm -hmm. be a little upset. So it's just a little bit of an odd scene up there in Toronto. So that's, yeah. that's one of the first teams I got. Do you, you want to swing it back towards you? You got another squad? Well, piggybacking, I do not have the Raptors either. And okay. for a lot of the reasons you said, I think the tough thing about them is I just don't know what their direction is because yeah. – they undeniably have good pieces. Pascal Siakam is an all-star. Scotty Barnes is a player who I think can be very good for them. OG Ananobi is a really good piece. They re-sign Jakob Pertl. They lose Fred Van Vliet, but they bring in Dennis Schroeder, who just won a World Cup uh, yep. with Germany. Um, but I just don't... They're, they're good. Like yeah. This isn't a, a team where it's like Gary Trent. Like it, It's not a team where it's void of talent. They're void yeah. of a direction almost, at least in my eyes, because I think they're going to try to be good. I don't think it's a team that's like keen on tanking. Yeah. But at the same time, like I don't know if they're good enough to quite edge out some of these other teams 
that I have in the playoff seating. Hundred um, percent. That your, yeah. your direction point is basically all that needs to be said. Yes, yeah. I don't know when where they're going, but you're probably oh. right. They're going to want to be good because who yep. doesn't want to be good unless you're very bad. So, yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. If if you're the Wizards, who are a team I'm not going to talk about in this video. Besides this, it's like they're a team where we know they're not going to be good, but yep. they had a great off season because they finally committed to being bad. Um, yeah. That's been something they haven't done in a long time. So for the Wizards, they're not a playoff team, but they, mm -hmm. they're fostering young talent and draft capital, and they have a direction. So I at least know what theirs is. With the Raptors, I don't know. I really yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, did you have any other teams that like just missed your cut? Another team that I just realized – I don't know if this is disrespectful or not based on the off season they had. They were the, what is that? One, two, three, four, the six seed last year. Mm -hmm. I have the Brooklyn Nets not making the playoffs. Um, I, I just don't really like the squad they got. Mm -hmm. I like McCall. Mm -hmm. I, 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 they're trying to hype up the Ben Simmons shooting outside clips again, just like every <laughs> other year. Yep. But uh, I just – I don't know, man. I, I, I think they're going to take a little bit of a hit this year and uh, fall out. Obviously, they had KD to start the year last yep. year that boosted their record a lot and all that. So, I just – I don't think they're making it this year. So, I'll put a timeout on that because okay. I'll come back to them later. Okay. But the two – so, essentially, I had five teams vying for two spots. Yep. Those teams were the Bulls, Magic, Nets, Raptors, Pistons. Yep. Those were the five teams that I kind of had vying. I touched on the Raptors. The other two teams I can kind of lump together. I have the Detroit Pistons not making it, and yep. I have the Orlando Magic not making it. And they're very, very close. And yep. I went back and forth on, on them, and it really came down to those two and Brooklyn. Yeah, because I was trying to figure out who's that 10. Like, who's the team that's just going to squeak in? Yep. I love what Orlando's doing. I think Paulo is going to be a superstar in this league. I think he's going to be incredible. Um, they've added some vets to that team. I think, you know, if you are an Orlando fan, you go into the season feeling like, yeah, we can make the playoffs. And yeah. I think you totally can. For sure. Um, same with Detroit. They added ta uh, veteran talent as well to try and, like, help that young core out. Um, but I just have them coming up short to Brooklyn at 10. And okay. we'll touch on them unless you have another team you would like to talk about first that missed the cut. I'm ready to jump into our 10 seeds if you are. Okay. I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay. And I have Brooklyn at 10. And this yep. is a team I – don't feel great about yeah. um they really really that six seed is so deceiving yeah because they, they were basically a they were a different team at the start at game one of last year towards the deadline because 100%. no more Kyrie no more Harden no more KD totally different roster like that six seed is super deceiving yeah um I do like McCall Bridges he's great um, I, they brought back Cam Johnson, um, Spencer Dinwiddie, Nicholas Claxton, Dorian Finney Smith. Like they have some good pieces. Yeah. The X factor is the guy you already talked about. Ben Simmons. Fool me one time. Fool me two times. I'm fooled because I'm fooled. I, oddly enough, believe in Ben Simmons going into this season pause I don't think he's going to be an all-star I don't think he's going to return to that like Philly form of his prime where he looked really good but I do think he can be a contributor I think he can be a guy in Brooklyn who can come in he the big thing has been confidence and the lack thereof with him this offseason, I kind of believe in him a little bit. Like, yeah. I kind of believe that he is set on, like, no, I'm healthy. 
I'm ready. I'm with a good unit. I like this team. I kind of believe him. This clip might bite me in the ass, but I think he is kind of the deciding X factor between the Nets making the playoffs or a team like the Raptors, Orlando, or Detroit. So okay. I've got the yeah. Nets at 10. That's fair, man. I, yeah. I would pop, I'd have to agree with that, and I'm on the other side of that where I'm fair. not a believer. Fair. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm fine with that. As for my 10 seed, mm -hmm. I do have the Orlando Magic making it in. Nice. Love the young energy. Anthony Black pick in the draft was a little mm -hmm. bit questionable, a little bit interesting, but he's mm -hmm. looked all right. He's looked good. Yeah, we there was that wasn't the question out of the draft was if he he can produce. I just totally. I didn't know if that was a fit for them and their team, but mm -hmm. they saw some. They have scouting and numbers and stuff that I don't have, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna trust it, man. Uh, yeah. I like I like their team. They're very guard heavy. They have a lot of great guards, young guards. Mm -hmm. But Wendell Carter Jr. is not too bad of a center. He can hold his own. Yeah. I I think the Magic string together a pretty good year and make the play in. So. Yeah. I I really like that pick. I mean, Franz Wagner and Paulo. I think the thing I'm most curious about with this Orlando team is who becomes the odd man out of that guard rotation. Because it's yeah. it's going to happen. I just don't know who it's going to happen to because – you have Markel Fultz, you have yep. Cole Anthony, you have Jalen Suggs, you have Anthony Black, you drafted Jet Howard, who can play some three, but is primarily a shooting guard. That's what they're going to ask of him. Then you have yep. Gary Harris, who is also, you know, a name that you at least have to consider on this list. He's probably, he's so probably I'm just curious. In that room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He's one of those vets. So I'm just really curious how that's going to play out because they have talent. They're a young, yeah. they're, they are one of the teams I am most excited to watch play this year. Um, but I, it's barely, it's Brooklyn by like half a game. It, yeah. It's really that tight. It's tight. Um, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I love it though. I like the Orlando pick there. Um, but now we go to nine, the nine spot. Yeah. I'll start us off. Please do. Please do. I have the Chicago Bulls. Now, on paper, this team is better than a nine. On paper. The game is not played on paper, sadly. Um, and this is another team like Toronto. I do not know their direction. Because there is a real chance they are not good near the deadline. And they sell and they trade Levine. They trade DeRozan. One of them or both of them. They have Vucevic. What happens with him? You have Patrick Williams. Alex Caruso as a defensive piece a contending team could want. I just don't know what they are. And yeah. so they're good enough to make the playoffs for me. But I, I'm just not confident in this Bulls team, sadly. Yeah, man. I uh, our first similarity of the video. I also have the Bulls as my nine seed. Mm -hmm. Same exact thing. I was basically going to say that you did. Yeah. They. I remember. I don't know if it was first year, second year that they had this new squad. They were mm -hmm. the one seed for a bit to start the season. Yep. They were kicking ass. Everyone was mm -hmm. like, "Oh my gosh, look, the Bulls are going to make the playoffs. They could push it to the finals." Yeah. They just collapsed out of yeah. nowhere. Like that team. Damar, Zach Levine, Vooch, Kobe Watt. Like, they have a mm -hmm. good team. Yeah. They just can't figure it out for whatever reason. It happens in sports sometimes. But yeah. So I agree with everything that you said. I'm not confident they could end up missing the playoffs. They could end up selling at the trade deadline. But yeah. gut reaction, how they should be. I think they mm -hmm. should be higher than the 9 seed. But I'm putting I them agree. Seed. I'm putting yeah. Them I think in terms of like their ceiling, I think they could be like seven at least, five, four, five, six, somewhere in there. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't know about this team. Lonzo Ball is the big like 
factor in this because him being out for the year, like when they were that one seed, he was really solid as their point guard. And without him now, you're losing that piece and you're starting Javon or Kobe White. You have Javon Carter, like Caruso. That guard rotation just isn't as strong as it could be, um, yeah. which is not necessarily Lonzo's fault. So, yeah, yeah, I, I feel like nine is kind of just yeah. where we have to slot him for now. Yep. Yeah. Um, but now we go to the eight seed. Who have you got? The eight seed, mm-hmm. the original last team in before the play in. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the Atlanta Hawks as mm-hmm. my eight seed. Trey Young, Dejounte Murray. I think they're finally, you know, figuring things out, getting going. Yeah, Clint Capella, you know, is a considerable. Could be a 2020 guy some nights. Mm-hmm. He, solid big man down there. So I just think Atlanta has a little bit more credibility than mm-hmm. my nine and 10 seeds is making yeah. the, as far as making the playoffs and having those X Factor guys, as in Trey mm-hmm. Young and DeJounte Murray when needed. And yeah. even um, John Collins, he's a solid power forward he can impact a game here and there win a game for you so he got traded to utah by the way quick quick point he got traded for what did he get traded for well thank you for that for uh, i appreciate you yeah you not look like an idiot because uh no no no, dude wet like why why have i been missing these guys deals bro <laughs> it, or it had to have happened in free agency a couple yeah, a month or it two was. ago and it just yeah so anyway yeah let's rescind all that i yeah. still have them as my hate yeah. i don't I, care i like their team yeah I like their squad. Yeah. yeah i i totally agree um i have the hawks in the playoffs as well but i have a different eight seed i have a team that we've talked about and that we're both excited about i have the indiana pacers at eight um, I, I, this team is so exciting to me because you have Tyrese Halliburton, yep. you have Miles Turner, you have, you added OB Toppin, um, you added Bruce Brown, who was a key part of the DNA of that Nuggets title run, yep. um, drafted Jairus Walker out of Houston, who we both loved. Um, it's going to be huge for that. Yeah. Yeah, he was making some big plays in preseason. Um, so I'm excited to see him next to Miles Turner and Obi Toppin, uh, Isaiah Jackson. That's a fun rotation. And then you have Buddy Heel, who, if you keep him, he's one of the best three point shooters in the league. And yeah. if you trade him, you can absolutely add some more young talent. Yeah. So I really like this Pacers team. I'm probably a little bolder on them than some people, but I think the eight seed kind of fits where I'd have them. Yeah. So, yeah. Perfect. 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 I would no. like to start with the seven seed. Do it. Do it. Please. Piggy- piggybacking off of yours. Love I it. guess I guess you might have rubbed yeah. off on me on the Pacers mm-hmm. bandwagon train. Yeah. I got them as my seven seed. I like it. I think Tyrese, he's been taking steps up every year. Mm -hmm. I think he takes another. He's just so good. He was one of the leaders of their team last year, helped push them to almost making Mm -hmm. the playoffs. They didn't make it. But I think that team leveled up, especially in the draft with Walker. Mm -hmm. He is going to be huge for them alongside Miles Turner. Yeah. Um, and they got they got some good rotational depth guys. They got Benedict mm-hmm. Matherin still kicking. Oh, yeah. You know, he was considerably looking like a rookie of the year for a bit last year. Mm-hmm. So they got some they got some guys out there, man. I, I just like what they're doing. I yeah. like where they're going, and I'm gonna project them as a seven seed this year. Yeah, I I totally agree. And Nemhard and McConnell, like yeah. they just have a nice nucleus. Like that is a really good. 10 11 man rotation like i'm and they have aaron neesmith as well like i yeah. just like the pieces that they've got in indiana um mm-hmm. ironically enough the seven seed for me is atlanta 
So okay. we just oh. flip flopped eight and seven. Yep. Um, the reason I have the Hawks at seven instead of eight, I believe Trey Young is on a mission this year. Yeah. Uh, he has been disrespected. I mean, I'll I'll just say it point blank. Uh, the way that people treat Trey Young is really weird to me because, yes, he's not a great defender, but what he is is an elite scorer, yeah. like one of the best in the league at that. Um, Get you a bucket whenever. Whenever and from wherever. Like, yeah. That's the there's very few players in the league who can really do that. And Trey Young is one of them. Yeah. Um, am I saying he's a top 10 player in the league? No. But what I am saying is he is a big impact player who a lot of people just dismiss. And yeah. a lot of it comes he's been talking about was with Team USA, how they opted not to bring him on the World Cup team. And he felt some type of way about it. And they basically said, like, we well, don't play the European brand of basketball that we're looking for. And he's felt slighted and he talked about it right away at media day of like, if you don't think I'm being disrespected, you are not listening. You're not hearing it. And I think he's right. And I'm not saying the Hawks are like a contender. I'm not saying anything like that, but I think we're going to see Trey young return to that elite form from like two, three years ago where he took the team to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, so I like this Hawks team. DeJounte Murray, Clint Capella. Um, it, it's fun. I, I think the Hawks were the seven last year, and I think they're practically the same team minus John Collins. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I like him at seven. I would have to. I mean, yeah, we just flip yeah, flopped. They're pretty similar. Pretty <laughs> yes. Similar, but, uh... Yeah. Um, but now we get to six and I've got a hot take. Okay. I have the Philadelphia 76ers here and it's, it's just, again, the Harden thing. Yeah. It's It's a massive, massive factor. And we will both touch on the heat at some point. I'm sure of it. Um, the reason I have the Sixers below a team like the heat is they do not have a glaring internal issue in the way the Sixers do. Harden is actively calling Daryl Morey a liar. He's actively not going to media day. He's at training camp. He's at things like that, but, that doesn't mean he'll be back come regular season. Um, Embiid is an MVP big. He is an incredible scorer. He's a great defender. He's a great player. Tyrese Maxey is a super fun guard who I think, if Harden is dealt, could really like ascend to an all-star caliber guard. Yeah. Um, Tobias Harris is Tobias Harris. We know what he is. They have some good pieces. Um that Harden thing just, it concerns me. So having them at six does not mean I think they are the sixth best team in the East. I think just as of right now, I feel comfortable slotting a couple teams ahead of them. And so that's what it is. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that because, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. We don't know what they're going to look like. Mm -hmm. They have the pieces to be solid. And like you said, not saying they're the sixth best team in the East, but it's, it's pretty big, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, arguably your second best player is, I don't want to say throwing a tantrum, but is disgruntled. That's the word I'm looking for. He's heavily disgruntled. And this is sadly kind of become hardened in the later years of his career, which sucks because i think harden is an all-time great all-time great scorer all-time great player yeah um but it's the reality with philadelphia right now is they're dealing with it so i think that is just that's enough for me to slot a couple teams ahead of them fair Fair. yeah um what do you got i almost went in the same direction as Mm -hmm. you but diverted Mm mm-hmm 
I have the New York Knickerbockers as my mm-hmm. sixth seed in the mm-hmm. East. Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, added Dante DiVincenzo, I think mm-hmm. is going to be big for them. Yeah. They're a solid team. They were the fifth seed last year. I guess I have them downgrading a little bit, but I think they have a similar type season as last year. You mm-hmm. know, they came out. I don't know if it was – they didn't shatter ex- – they they played above expectations a little bit. I don't know mm-hmm. what the expectations were. It was weird with the Brunson deal. People didn't know if he was their guy. He came out, kind of proved that he can be their guy. Totally. So I – I like the Knicks. I like what they're doing. I got them as my six seed. Yeah. I uh I will talk about the Knicks here in a bit, but I've got them I've got them high. Um okay. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh the next team, the five seed. Mo, who have you got at the five seed? Now is where I will slot in the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Joel Embiid, MVP, player year in, year out. Tyrese Maxey can take that step up. If Harden is dealt, I agree with that. He has the mm-hmm. skills to be an all-star. Yep. This team, it's just it's interesting. We need Harden to make a decision. Is he staying? Is he going? Are they trading him? Are they not trading him? But I get it for a lot of teams. The same story keeps playing over and over. I wouldn't want to trade for him. I wouldn't want to give up my future for that, just for him to play for a couple months and then be like, "Ah, I don't like it here. I don't like Mm -hmm. what they're doing. So it's just, it's a tough spot for them to be in. If this situation wasn't going on, they'd probably be my third seed easy. Totally. But just because of what's going on, I'm going to have to drop them down a little bit. This is where I got them. Yeah. yeah. I I totally agree. And it's crazy, too, because like Harden is still a good player. He led the league in assists last year, I believe. Yeah. Like, he's done a really good job at evolving. And the big thing when he was traded to Philadelphia and Brooklyn was like, can he take a Robin role? Or can yeah. he take a role that's like not Batman? Like, can you be second fiddle, sometimes third fiddle, if Maxi is really playing well, or yeah. Tobias Harris? Um, and he has. So that's the weird thing about this is, like, it's not a problem of fit. It's not a problem of, like, does he make the Sixers better? He does, but We've seen it. <laughs> the, the chemistry is just a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that's totally fair to have them further a little bit. Yep. Um, my fifth seed is the team that went to the finals last year, uh, the Miami Heat. And this is simply because it doesn't matter where they are in the seeding. They're not a regular season team because yeah. they wait, not wait, but when playoffs come around, you know they're dangerous. They're built for it. They're That's built for it. It doesn't really matter where they end up. No. And as you saw last year, as a play. We're, Absolutely. We're, like, yeah, it just, mm-hmm. it's insane. Yeah. So this is one of those teams where it's like, I think they're the third best team in the East. If I was doing a power rankings, I'd put yeah. them at three. Because I know for a 100% fact, come playoff time, Jimmy Butler will show up. Bam yep. Adebayo will show up. Caleb and they will, Martin. Caleb will Martin. Show up. <laughs> they're going to have random role players who will step up. I'm guessing a Jaime Hawkes will be a guy. A Haywood Highsmith will be a guy. Like It's going to be guys like that who just... That heat culture is talked about very often. But yeah. it's a real thing. It's, it's a legitimate piece of their program and mm-hmm. what makes them so dangerous. So... Me slating them at five is not a uh, slant. It's not, a, oh, they're not contenders. They are by default yep. because they've proven it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've lost some big pieces, man. They lost Max Struess. They lost Gabe Vincent, who were yeah. both key to that finals run. 
yeah. uh, Udonis Hag, who has been a vet in that locker room at this point for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you talk about heat culture, he is one of those guys. Um, and they didn't really add anyone. The whiff on Dame is obviously the bad, big, bad miss. The not going after Beal is a big miss. Um, Whiffing on Drew. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Great point. Great point. Yeah. Drew Holiday as well. So I, I think it's tough to slate them higher than some of these other teams, um, even though we know come playoff time, it's they're the real deal. Yeah. So I've got them at five. Fair. Very fair. Yeah. Um, but now we go to the four seed. Teams with home court in that first round. Yep. This is where I've got New York Knicks. I think that the Knicks are one of those teams that can vie for the best defense in the entire league. That defense is electric. Um, Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, Mitchell Robinson. There's some issue, I think, about the wing depth, um, but Dante DiVincenzo coming in is a really nice piece. Yep. Emmanuel Quickly is a guy who I think can be a six-man-of-the-year contender. Dropped um, 40 a couple times yeah. last year, so yeah. Really good. Uh, Josh Hart, obviously, who's a, a great piece of that defensive identity. Yep. I really like this Knicks team. Um, I don't think I would put them in a contender category. Not, I don't think I wouldn't put them in a contender category. Yeah. Um, but they are still a really good team that I think could give some people problems and people kind of underrated them last playoffs and they showed up and dominated the Cavs. Mm -hmm. So I like the Knicks here at four. Um, I think this is a really good ball club. I respect it, man. I respect yeah. it because I did not think about that. But yeah. I, I can see it now that you gave your analysis. I can't lie. Yeah. Their defense is very good. I was kind of sleeping yeah. on that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. It's just the brain, bro. Everyone, we're always the offense, bro. When they got an offense, mm-hmm. who's their, who's going to be their leading scorer? Who's gonna, but yep. it's two two-way street, man. Yep. So, yeah. Like- I like it. We know Brunson and Randall. Brunson, he was an all-star. He was a great player. Yep. Randall, when he's playing at his peak, he's an all-star. Can, should have, have been considerably yeah. last year. Might have been yeah. snubbed. but yeah. yeah. So you know those two pieces are going to be good. And I you I like a lot of the pieces around them. Quickly, Hart, um, Mitchell Robinson, guys like that. So, yeah, I, I've got the Knicks here at four. Um, who have you got? Here is where I slot in the Eastern Conference representative of the finals last year, the Miami Heat. I got them at mm-hmm. the four. Yeah. He touched on their losses, gave Vincent Max Strews pretty big for them. Mm-hmm. But as you also talked about, they'll find replacements somehow in some way. Yeah. Might not be in the same production that they were giving, but they mm-hmm. might have two or three guys that can – help add to that. It's just, they do yep. it every year. So yep. Eric Spolsch has got them figured out their system figured out. He has mm-hmm. their players buying in. You don't hear too many issues of guys being upset down there outside of, you know, Tyler hero and the trade talks. But yeah, I feel like he's a guy you might get over that. I feel like he's been talked about a little bit the past few years. Mm-hmm. So he's probably used yeah. to it. I think they just want to hoop, man. So yeah. Jimmy and the boys, I think they put together a solid regular season mm-hmm. for seed. Yeah. 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 I that, I'm glad you brought up Tyler Hero because that's one of the things I didn't talk about where yeah. he has been very mature about this whole thing. <laughs> and it's really impressed me. Um him just saying, like, it's a business. I know the NBA is a business. Yeah. This isn't my first year. I I know how these things go. I'm yeah. happy to be here in Miami and I want to win. And that's great because for a lot of guys, rightfully so, they'd be like, oh, you wanted to trade me? Like, 
screw yeah. y'all. Like, yeah. That's it. Now you yeah. have to, because yeah. I don't care about being here anymore. I want to play yeah. somewhere where I'm wanted. So for him to go about it in that manner of like, it's a business. I want to be here in, you know, obviously it would hurt his feelings. It would hurt mine. If yeah. my employer was like, eh, we might trade you for someone better. Yeah. That, that would hurt, you yeah. know, on a human level. So for sure. I, I totally understand that. Um, yeah, I, I agree with your analysis on the heat as well. Um, which means we have the top three teams all the same, but we don't realized. know. the order. Damn. Kind of crazy. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't going to have this team in my top three, but I, so I had to slot them in. I'm, I'm assuming you've got the Cleveland, Cle- Cle- ah, the Cleveland yeah. Cavaliers at three. I, I do. Yeah. I do have Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland and company at three. Mm-hmm. Just yep. really like what they've been doing the past few years. They've been putting it together, adding slowly, figuring out how to break through the East because it has been top heavy. I feel like the last few years with the Bucks and the Celtics and the Sixers, you kind of know who's going to be mm-hmm. up there. So they've been that team that's been knocking at the door, trying to break through and adding Max Struess. I don't know if that is the breakthrough, yeah. but it's a great add because. Yeah. That is where they struggled. They didn't really have wings like that. They had yep. guards, they had bigs, and mm-hmm. then they had Shetty Osman starting at small forward. No hate to Shetty Osman. He's an all right average mm-hmm. NBA player. But if you're going to want to compete, you're going to need to do better than that. And they did that. So yeah. I like their signings. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to bolster them up because they were a four seed last year. I think they jump up one spot, three seed yeah. this year. Yeah, I you touched on the most important thing, which was the wing position. Yep, weak. It, it was yep. it was very weak for them. Um, and a lot of people want to point at the Knicks playoff series where Evan Mobley got, I mean, exposed. Like <laughs> yeah. I, it was not a good series. Donovan Mitchell played really, really poorly. Um, Horrible. But having Max Struess bringing in Georges Niang from the 76ers, like you now have Niang kind of plays the four more, but still I you have that. Added him. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Niang there. Isaac Okoro was playing really well in Summer League. He hasn't mm-hmm. quite found his stride, but I think in there is a solid three and D type of player, which is exactly what this Cavs team needs. Yeah. Um, extending Karis LeVert. I just like this team. Um, I know Jared Allen has been floated around in trade rumors, and I get it, but I just don't quite know what they would do because yeah. I wouldn't want to play Mobley at the five. If he has to in some lineups, he can. But yeah. ideally, he's a four. Like That's where he yeah. really excels. So... I kind of think Jared Allen as a, a five is perfect. I don't I really know who played for them. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. He's, he's been playing he's, great he's, for them. Exactly. Yeah. He's, he's spent time in Cleveland ever since being traded um, from Brooklyn and has been an impact player. So I really like this Cavs team. Obviously there's going to be someone who hasn't been listening and they're going to be like, Oh, well the Knicks dominated the Cavs in the playoffs. So why do you have the Cavs above the Knicks? This isn't power rankings. Again, yep. just to regular reiterate season. the point, regular yep. season. And I think the Cavs are one of those teams that can really surprise some people um, come end of the season. Because yep. Donovan Mitchell is that guy. 70, dog. bro. Like, not if everyone in the league could do that, they would. Yeah. Not everyone in the league is doing that every game. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep, Different, and man. similar to Trey Young, has kind of heard the noise of like, man, you play terrible in the playoffs, you da 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 da. I think it's going to motivate him now this season too to be like, all right, well let me right. let me unload the clip now. Let me, let me show you. Well, let me not save until the playoffs when the lights. Are, let me get, <laughs> let me get going. Yes, yeah. 
Absolutely. So honestly, I kind of want another Cavs Knicks playoff series. I'd love to see that. I'd love a rematch. And I just, re- I would have that in mind. I oh. didn't even mean to do that. Oh, yeah, right? you would. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Oh, snap. See, I'd I'd love to see that. I want to see them meet again. So, yeah, I would love to see a playoff game there. I think I was watching um, the Through the Wire sports podcast. Shout out those guys. They're all super dope. Um, And one of the guys was talking about how the Cavs play the Knicks like in the first couple games of the season. And he's like, man, like. Donovan's gonna give us 80. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's in the garden. He's gonna be pissed. He's gonna yeah. be like, all right, well, I got let me show y'all that I'm not going anywhere and I want the smoke again. Yep. Um, so I'd love that as a series, but it'll be exciting. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about everyone. We know what one and two are. We all do. We know we what the, the top of this Eastern Conference is. So I will let you I will let you go first here. Um with the spoke be on my chest and my pride wavering heavy. I don't know if that was the right word. I am going to shock the world and put the Boston Celtics as my two seed. Yep. I uh I just couldn't do it. I wanted to yep. do it, but I can't. The Bucks mm-hmm. are dangerous. We'll talk about them in a second. I love what the Celtics did. Draw day, Chris stops. I'm starting to come around to it a bit more since our mm-hmm. last video. I'm starting to get over the mental humps <laughs> of losing guys that I love. Yeah. That change is good. And I think it will be good. I think we're going to have a great season. Obviously, preseason's preseason. I yeah. loved watching our unit against the 76ers the other night. They came out kind of mm-hmm. iffy. It's again preseason, but yeah, Chris Stops was looking good. He breaking some ankles, catching mm-hmm. lobs. Like he's looking, he's looking healthy. He's looking excited. He's looking yeah. ready to play in green. And as I've talked about, I don't know if it was on the pod. It might have been just with Zay, but. Yeah. He's saying all the right things in his interviews. Everything he's saying about the city, about the fans, yeah. about his want, about being here. Same with Drew. When Drew came over, they've yeah. just been hidden check marks for me in my head. So I, I'm very excited for the Celtics. I think you're gonna have an amazing year. Yeah. It's gonna come down to these two squads, I think, hopefully in the Eastern Conference Finals. But yeah, I don't have enough for them to be the one seed. I'm gonna slot them in at two. I agree. I have the yep. Celtics at two, and I think the biggest reason for me, the the deciding 51% bucks, 49% Celtics here was the Celtics have undergone massive changes this offseason. Yeah. It's a complete rewiring of their team, which I am a supporter of because I think you kind of got to shake things up a little bit when you knock at the door as many times as the Celtics have. Um, They've consistently been great over and over again, but haven't been able to get over the hump, and you kind of have to shake things up in order to do that. So... No Marcus Smart, who was basically the heart and soul of the team. No Robert, who, when he plays, is a defensive menace, a great lob threat, great player. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon won six man of the year. And then Grant Williams, who is a loss, but not a massive one because Joe Mazzulla didn't play him the same way Emi Udoka did. Like, Emi clearly loved Grant. Like, yeah, he was getting serious playoff minutes, especially in that run against the Bucks when he was he the won us one of the games. Yeah. yeah. So, like, he, he was on the court, the final lineup, like, end game lineup, yeah. Grant Williams. Um, whereas Joe was definitely more like it's, it wasn't that he didn't like him as a person, he didn't like him in his personnel bar. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of what it was. Come on, bro. That's kind of what it was um, where Grant was 
a good player, but he didn't just quite fit. So now in Dallas, I think it makes more sense. Um, yeah. The Bucks have, we'll touch on them here next, definitely shaken their team up as well. But the Celtics have moved so many pieces out and then now have Drew Holiday coming in and Kristaps Porzingis coming in. And a Peyton Pritchard is probably going to have a bigger role. And what's the depth going to look like there, especially off the bench? Jordan Walsh can get some minutes, get yeah. in, get he yep. was doing good in preseason and a little mm-hmm. steel coast to coast lay. Like yeah. if we can give us that a couple possessions against a team's top player or mm-hmm. second best player scoring that, that'd be huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I really like, it's literally like a 51 49 split here. Um, yeah. And we're going to talk about both these teams a lot over the course of the season. So, yep. Yep. I'm I'm really excited. I think it would be an all time matchup, but uh, yeah, we do have a diff or the same one seed with the Milwaukee yep. Bucks. Yep. Um, take it away as to why you have the Bucks at one. Damian Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo, yep. Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, yep, and Pat Connaughton. Bobby. Don't Big forget Bobby. Bobby off the bench. <laughs> Don't forget Marjan Bochamp. I'm excited. Looking, looking solid. Probably mm-hmm. going to get some minutes this year. Yeah. Their team has leveled up, obviously, this offseason. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they're scary. They're mm-hmm. very scary. They uh, were the one seed last year. I feel like they're just I, I feel like they're gonna reclaim the throne, man. I their yeah. their team, there's some issues with the depth. If someone goes down, it might get a little interesting. But mm-hmm. I just feel like their system, their team, their buy-in, it's similar to a Miami Heat, not the same type because the Heat have done it for so long, but just similar. They're kind of they're kind of starting to copy and paste that over into theirs they're they're getting after it everyone's buying in guys are going to produce when given time and it's just all going to come together for them i think that's why i have them as my one seed yeah totally fair i mean the big thing is damian lillard right like yeah lillard and Giannis is it like my brain still so they're gonna play i believe this uh Sunday, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, one of the days, because their head coach, Adrian Griffin, brought up that we're going to see the tandem for the first time. That is going... I, it won't click for me that they're on the same team until I see that. And then it's going to be like, wow. Like, that team can be so good. And in the same way where, like, the Celtics have the ability to kind of swap out lineups and run different dynamics it's the same in milwaukee um the one concern obviously you touched on is injury the other being drew holiday um yeah if you were the bucks the the number one team in the entire league when you traded him that you did not want to see him go to was the boston celtics that yep. hands down the number one then it's probably like the he you probably have the Warriors, teams like that. But the number one was like, it's not Boston. Yep. Not Boston. He's in Boston. And so he is. he is so, so, so good defensively. And I, honestly, the best part about him getting traded in these deals is people giving him his credit now of like, no, he's a dog. Like, he is so good on defense. He can sw- go on the perimeter. He can guard four different positions like he's so dynamic yeah um while Lillard is still a good defender like don't get it twisted he is not like a a liability on defense Drew Holiday was voted by NBA GMs yesterday the second best defender in the entire NBA behind Giannis so everyone knows what's up with Drew yeah like Mm -hmm. that is the one thing is if that defense isn't quite as good and we know how good a Celtics offense can be 
that could honestly be the deciding factor. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. I mean, the potential for both these teams is unreal. I appreciate you bringing up that point about Drew for the Bucks because it we mm-hmm. saw it a bit in the preseason. I was watching, and there was like four or five possessions in a row yeah. where he yeah. got his hand on the ball, got a steal, got like just he obviously he has the stats, he gets steals, he might get a block mm-hmm. here and there, but he just does the little things on defense that don't show up on the stat sheet. Yes, that GMs and coaches and people see. That yeah. make obviously you're not voted second for a reason behind Giannis Antetokounmpo for nothing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. He, he just does everything right on defense, positioning, help, not helping, just everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I I totally agree. That that is the biggest thing is the players who do things that don't show up in a, a box score. Where yep. after a game, someone who hasn't seen the game looks at your holiday and they're like okay, he had 12 points, he had six assists, uh, he had a steal, he had four rebounds. Like, that's a good game from him. That's all right, but not really that great. What you didn't see is him being a pest off the ball, him denying Giannis from getting the ball on a fee from Lane. Uh, Lane. Shout out Lane. I don't know why I'm Shout thinking of Lane. Lane. <laughs> point guard. Drew, point guard. <laughs> yeah, point guard, too, okay? Uh, Drew Holiday. Uh, or Damian Lillard, holy crap, on a feed from Lillard. Um, and so <laughs> things like that that don't pop up in a box score is what Drew Holiday does, and it's what Marcus yep. Smart did with the Celtics for years. So yep. it's it's that 50-50 split. The Bucks just didn't shake up the team as much as the Celtics, which is why yeah. I feel that 1% better is fair they uh, they moved Drew, they moved grayson they did that but like for the most part that was their big move the celtics had yeah. two big blockbuster trades this offseason um yeah which even though i think they won both they're still big big moves so for sure for sure yeah. um last thing the one thing i talked about in the raptors about new head coach coming in and finding success yeah. and now i said the raptors aren't going to do that i guess i believe the bucks are going to do that yeah so we'll see that's my, that's my one worry now that we're talking about it of them being the one seed but yeah. they are way too freaking talented to not be a top three seed minimal. i agree yeah i totally agree i mean i i think like the thing is, too, even if in the regular season they're not the one seed, say they're they're like three or four, like they really yeah. underachieve given what yep. people expect. Come playoff time, I I believe they'll be good. Um, yeah, I still don't like the firing of uh, of Bud, but I don't get it. I still don't get it to this day. Any, it, it's. It happens every time. Any team, a team, doesn't live up to expectations. Giannis was hurt last year in the playoffs. Middleton was banged up. Doesn't matter. The first person to get blamed every time across sports, not just basketball, but across sports, head coach, fire him. Yep. Yep. Restart. That, Restart. that was the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they. Oh man, they. And he did. He made some dumb decisions. Like yeah. don't get don't get it twisted. I remember I remember people being pissed, especially Bucks fans. Like, dude, what is he doing with these lineups? Why is he not calling a timeout here? Stuff like that. In the same way that Mr. Joe Mazzula kind of was in the playoffs. Um, yep. So having that happen, I, I get wanting to shake your team up, but I Adrian Griffin being the head coach, I think is a really good point that you brought up because. That could also be a difference maker. Yeah. Missoula's got an extra year we'll of yeah, being a head coach. We'll and yeah. yeah, it's this season is going. I, I seriously haven't been this excited for a season. Maybe ever. And I got I got the first time I'm getting league pass, so I'm locked in. Come on. I'm Come locked on. in. Yep. Yes, man. Yes, man. Absolutely. Um, so that's it. We got you 
10 through 1. We touched on the teams that just missed it. Um, any other final points before we get to the most important part? Or I don't believe so. Yeah. Don't believe All right. So. Well, y'all know what time it is then. <sighs> Let's get the people what they want for the weekend. <laughs> Come on. With the song, song of, the of the pod. Yep. Mo. <sighs> you first. You first, my friend. <clears throat> I got some new heat mm. from the homicide, homicide, homicide gang. I got what it is. New song, beat okay. is fire. They're just kind of talking over it, rapping over it, doing their <laughs> thing. It just, it's just a head bobber to get your weekend going, get you in the right mentality to just, oh, it's it's good. It's good. I love it. I love yep. it. Um, I've got a hey, piggybacking off you, another song to just like get the vibes up. Yep. Hard to Handle by Young Scooter and Future. I will go as far as to say Future's feature on that. It might be the best feature of the year. It is incredibly is this good. Drop this year? Yeah. Got it is. Yep. yep. He goes in. He goes ballistic. <laughs> like, yep. I, I was listening to the verse and I'm like, dude, hold, I haven't heard Future this hungry on a song like yeah. i love future he's one of my favorite artists but like he was he was starving he, <laughs> he, was, was, he had something to prove here. rent was due, something rent was due. yes he, he was ready to go so yeah. that song is incredible probably top five song of the year for me this year um Bet. so yeah get the vibes right mo and i you know we're trying to trying to get the vibes up to 10 going into Elevated. the weekend for y'all yep Yep. So um, we appreciate y'all for sticking around all the love on our latest videos. They've Insane. been the most successful yet. Um, we, we thank y'all. Um, it it means seriously means a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Mo and I love doing this. So mm -hmm. thank you all for mm -hmm. continuing to watch and share and like and comment and subscribe and all that. We're on the road to a hundred. So we're close. We're excited, we're close. man. We're yep. excited. Um, yeah, have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. We will see y'all in the next video with the Western yep. Conference. Later, everyone. We'll see you soon. Peace.